Welcome back. Thank you. It's Zoo's line, is it anyways, with the beautiful Santa Barbara Zoo. Moving into our final round, our second half. So the Parasite team is up. Come on, Dr. Kirk. All right. So tell us, you had an adventure in uh, Africa recently. This was through the Gates Foundation. What was the problem there? And what, what country did you go to? And what, what was the problem? Uh, Kenya. And the problem is a tropical disease caused by a parasitic worm, the schistosome, blood flukes. They live in the blood system. And uh, maybe uh, worldwide, 300 million people, maybe 100,000 a year die. So it's, it isn't AIDS or malaria or TB, but it's the next level, and Gates is quite interested in that. So where, what, what causes schisto? Do you so mind if we use the, uh, the abbreviation? Schisto, Okay. Yeah. It's a two-host life cycle. Uh, the adults live in the blood system, the veins of humans, and the, uh, the larvae live in snails. And while the humans have a bad time, if you're a snail, they have a worse time because they're, they're parasitic castrators in the snail. They eliminate reproduction of the snail. The snail then, sh this infected snail, which really makes just worm babies now, uh, the worms that leave the snail go on out and they penetrate through the skin through just water contact. So you, you don't have to do anything terribly dirty or anything to become infected. And so, um, where, so you were in Kenya, were you also in, in Senegal as well? There was a new uh, dam or body of water that was created there? Uh, w the, uh, uh, we're working uh, more in Senegal. I actually hope to return to Kenya, where we used to work. And in Senegal, it's uh, probably the world's worst situation. Uh, there's no immunity to this. So after you, you, there's a good drug and you can deworm the people but they can actually get reinfected by water contact even a day later. And uh, the, the disease was so terrible in Senegal when they made this dam, 1985. Before the dam, no disease at all in Senegal. By the late 80s, the world's worst situation. It just was terrible. So now, how, what can you do to prevent this? So we, we're ecologists, and while there is a good drug, you can't block transmission, which is an ecological issue. And we are using predators, things that love to eat snails. Like what? Like these freshwater prawns uh, in the Senegal River. Uh, these are prawns that live more like they were crayfish. They walk around on the bottom, and they are this big. Tip of, tip of claw to tip of tail. Almost like lobsters. <laughs> the Senegalese actually say, call them freshwater lobsters. Yeah. In Kenya, we are using uh, an American teammate, the Louisiana crayfish. And now, how do you get the prawns into the, into the dam? The prawns used to be there. They're native, and when they built the dam, they not only made the lake for the schistosomes, uh, for the snails, but they blocked the migration of the prawns where they would breed in the estuary. So it was a double whammy. Uh, they... Uh, took out a predator, the, the predator, and they made a perfect habitat for the snail. How do you get the prawns into the body of water? Well, uh, we are building a prawn ladder, actually. Prawn the, ladder, a ladder for the, the prawns. The okay. person in charge of the prawn ladder is sitting over there, Kevin Lafferty. Hey, there we go, Dr. Uh, Lafferty, hoo-hoo. <laughs> so uh, a prawn ladder around Diama Dam uh, is, uh, is gonna be in the works. And then we have, working with Israelis, we are bringing in hatchery uh, development to sort of speed up the repopulation of the prawns. All right, science in the works. Thank you, Dr. Kuris. I don't know, guys. Something of this magnitude, to me, says opera. Opera. Yeah, yeah, sure it is. This is a crisis. All right. This is very serious. Opera. Lights have changed suddenly. <laughs> So many snails, so, so many, many snails, so many snails. Everywhere I look, I just see snails. There's there and there and there. there and 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 there
What eats snails? What like snails? What eats snails? Prawns. 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 Yes. Yes. Prawns. But how will the prawns get up? into the damned up lake. We will build, we will build a ladder with the hands. And we'll build from wood and the a prawns ladder, will walk up the ladder, ladder to the dam. And, and the prawns will march up the ladder to the dam. Go prawns, go, march prawns, march prawns, go, 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 Let your spiny little legs carry you high. And when you feel discouraged, don't be dismayed, but march, 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 march up march, the ladder, go march, 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 you march go, go, go. Go, 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 and much, 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 and much, 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 Okay, so the way this works, Christina, is if the uh, we're gonna switch from ants to coyotes, the coyotes. And you worked with coyotes uh, in the Midwest, and they're gonna conduct a coyote exam. Exam. They're exam. They're gonna call it a coyote for tracking. Okay. But they obviously don't know what to do, right? No. So if they do something you would do in the field, you're gonna ring the bell. Okay. And if they do something that you wouldn't do, they'll hit the horn. Okay. And I'll be over here to help you if need be. Yeah. All right, come on up, guys. <laughs> Are we doing so we're collaring a coyote. Oh, we're going to collar, collar one? Yeah. Okay. To track it. Oh, we're collaring. Collaring. Collaring a, a coyote. Collar. Okay. And this is yes. This is something you do and put the no there. All right. And the no is the horn. Dr. Jameson, I brought in this unconscious coyote I found. <laughs> Thank oh. you, Henry. <laughs> hey, uh, Dr. Jameson. There's the coyote. It's asleep over there under that bush. <laughs> <laughs> boys, boys. <laughs> Dr. Jameson, we need to call her a coyote. What do you suggest? Well, you see, it's just sitting there, and it's asleep. Yes, and it's not asleep. You see, it's looking at us like it wants to attack us. No, no. Do you see that it's looking out in the meadow? Nope. I get the feeling, no. <laughs> ah, look over there. There's a female coyote, and that coyote is heading towards the yeah. female. I'm going to tranquilize it. <laughs> nah, I'm not. I'm going to put the rifle back in the truck. I'm going to play a love song to it on my guitar. That sounds... Oh! oh. <laughs> well done. Go. Jim, go ahead and sing. Coyote. Yep, 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 go! <laughs> Don't you want some jewelry? Yep, 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 you. A pretty collar around your neck <laughs> that'll make you feel pretty. Look, it's unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he staggered over there and he's unconscious. He staggered right there. We should put a tracking collar on it now. The kind that beeps when you put it on, right? Like tracking collars do? 
Well done, Henry. Yes, yes. Here's a collar that beeps when you put it on an unconscious... I think Dr. Jameson should do it. She's the senior member of the team. You should do it. Yeah. I'll do it in case it wakes up, right? In yes. Case, I'm an intern in case it wakes up. It, Henry, you know what to do in case he wakes up. I do. If he wakes up, I'm just to hang on as tight as I can to this coyote <laughs> until he tires. I'm just going to get out of the way as fast as I can. Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> okay. Oh. The collar's on. We should probably test this thing while it's still unconscious to see if it works. Come oh. on. <laughs> Nicely done, Henry. Will you push the button on the tracking device? Look, it makes a lovely dinging sound. <laughs> it used to. <laughs> oh, there you go. There. Uh, it's activated. Look, that thing's waking up. Oh. We should probably track it. Yeah. Let's get in the van. Yeah. <laughs> and blackout. Okay. <laughs> All right. Judges score. <laughs> four, four, and a three. Okay, just something really interesting that I don't think they would have guessed. More humane than injecting the coyote, what would you sometimes do? Uh, we don't inject the coyote at all in any way, shape, or form. Um, we basically, we trap it, um, and then I, I walk up to it, and I check out, you know, who it is. If it's a, if it's a dominant animal, then I'll put a really big collar on it, like a really expensive one, because um, that dominant animal is going to stay in the area, and I'll be able to learn about it. If it's not a dominant animal, I want to put a cheap collar on it because it might take off. So, uh, so yeah, so I walk up to this animal, try to assess its relative status. You know, you know the dogs have this alpha, you know, hierarchy, right? And so you can kind of figure out how dominant they are pretty quickly. And me as a female, being obviously very unthreatening, can walk up to an animal and try to figure that out pretty quickly. Um, so I walk up to it, figure it out, figure out what kind of collar I want to put on it. And then uh, noose pull it, which is basically just kind of put a little um, collar around its neck, hold it down, and then then straddle it, <laughs> sit on it, and do the assessment right there. So it doesn't ever have to be drugged, doesn't have to go through that traumatic stress at all. Um, so it's a pretty humane way of, of putting a collar on an animal, getting some blood, and, and letting it go on its way. Okay, we have two, two games coming up uh, next. Let's bring the uh, snake team back up. So when people find out what you do for a living, are, do, do you get some, some prejudice? Do you get some pushback? Um, yeah, I, I'm sure there's a few people that think it's cool, but uh, probably one of the most common responses I have is somebody wants to tell me the last snake they killed was a shovel or, or something like that. Yeah. 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 When I tell people I'm a marketing director for the beautiful Santa Barbara Zoo, they don't go like, ew, no, you know? No, yeah, no, people are grossed out and, and don't really comprehend why you would want to kill a snake. Well, tell me, why are snakes uh, awesome? Why are snakes awesome? Um, well, maybe I could just say how I sure. came what we're yeah. snakes. So actually, it was a little bit of an accident. I was looking for a project for my PhD, and my PhD advisor said, why don't you come out to snake camp in California and see if you like snakes? And I'd never held a snake before. Um, and I went out uh, in one of the meadows where I was studying the snakes, and everyone was catching snakes everywhere, and I couldn't see any. And then all of a sudden, I saw my first snake, and I reached for it, and I totally missed it. Um, and I was feeling very disconsolate, and then I felt something under my foot. It actually doubled back, um, and I reached down and I grabbed it, and I caught my first snake, and it was a very satisfying experience. They're beautiful animals. They're so gentle. Um, not every snake is gentle, but the ones that I study primarily are. Um, and I, and is I, California a good place for snakes? Are there? Yeah, you know, so there's there's 33 species um, here in California. 33 species um, in California alone. And wow. six of them are rattlesnakes, which are the only venomous snakes in California. Otherwise, we have um, 27 other really lovely and secretive small animals that um, we actually hardly know anything about. There's so few people studying them for a number of different reasons. Part of it is that a lot of people don't like them, um, but also is that they can be difficult to study, partly because they're secretive. Um, so I think of it as a sort of a challenge um, and really fun to learn about organisms that people don't know very much about. And tell me, how do they move about? I mean, what's their, uh, they've got a really interesting, you know, physicality to them. Uh, well, they slither. Yeah, um, but they how, do they <laughs> how do they do that? Um, well, so they have a lot of muscles uh, all along their bodies and all vertebrae all down their bodies, and they use different push points in their environment 
um, in order to navigate. Yeah. Well, the scales different on their their underside as they are from. Um, their yeah, so their their ventral scales on their belly are, are long, thin scales that they use actually. They can grip um, different surfaces, so they can do some climbing and stuff because of that as well. And how fast can a really fast snake go? What have they been measured at? Oh, I don't I don't have a number for you. Okay. Um, most of the time, you know. If if they're undisturbed, they're going to be moving pretty slowly along. Okay. Um, it's it's really when they're fleeing that sometimes you know they can be quite fast. It depends on how warm they are, right? Oh. Um, the warmer it is, the faster they are. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for the pep talk on snakes. Why don't you have a seat? All right, snakes. So that means uh, Stephen Stephen is up. Oh. And right. for this one, can you get two? I'm not having a good luck getting volunteers from the audience. Can you get two volunteers and maybe do a moving body scene? Oh, a moving body scene. Okay. Uh, so we need just two volunteers. Uh, maybe they can. You can be an adult. Um, we're gonna open it up. Okay. Here we are. And then. Um, and then someone from over here, uh, another adult from this segment, or uh, it does you know. T okay, in the back, come on up. Hi, hi. What's your name? I'm Chris. Chris. This is Chris, everyone. <laughs> and uh, and what is your name? Taylor. Taylor. This is Taylor. Let's hear it for Taylor. Okay. Um, actually, there are three of us technically, so we need one more volunteer on stage just in case. So. Um, how about the little guy in the back? Come on up, yeah. And you are the head of the zoo, is that right? What is your name? Grant. Grant, okay. So during this scene, we can't move unless you move our bodies, including you can touch the back of our legs to make us walk like this, but anything we do, you have to actually move us. And yes, the actors who will be on stage doing the scene. So come on up, guys. So absolutely everything is provided by each one of you. Okay. So. Dean, yeah. to get our scene started based on the interview, what, where might we be? You uh, might be in a bowling alley. Oh, oh we're in a bowling alley. No. Okay. <laughs> I heard so much about a bowling alley in that interview. I'm okay, glad but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> we're going to take that. Okay, so uh, here we are, uh, bowling alley. <laughs> How do you do? I'm here to uh, handle the snake problem at your bowling alley. Thank you so much, Dr. Oh, he here, here, there's some snakes right around. We called you, we're so uh, scared. Oh, we're just so scared. We feel like up in arms now, about now. I'm scared, I'm scared. <laughs> oh, I'm scared. I know, I'm, I'm not toting in too. circles. High five. Up high, up <laughs> high, we're all scared. Okay. Everyone's afraid. <laughs> Terrified. Okay. Snakes now, don't go up high, so it's best to be up if high. If you could just tell me where the snake is, I'll take a look at it. Well, I'm walking come towards this them. way. <laughs> okay. I'm walking this way. You're ahead of me. Oh, right, 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 right. There's one right no, there. No, but up your leg, up your leg. Oh, oh, it's up your elbow. It's a, oh, oh, my God. Oh. There, yeah. it's up there. It has amazing yeah. climbing ability. Oh. Yeah. It's up there near the scoreboard. I can't see it. I'm looking straight ahead. <laughs> if only my head could move. Oh, I'm going to keep dragging. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Now, if everyone just stays calm, I'm going to pray for a moment. Dear God, dear God, God, please, please let oh. us catch this snake. I can't even look. Oh. No, no. Dear God, I hope I'm okay, and I hope we catch this snake. Amen. Oh, oh. Please, Many, yeah. please don't you have any other scientific methods you can use besides prayer to get rid of the snakes? I'm, I'm checking to see if you're a human even. I, <laughs> yes, no, I'm no. human, and I have a scientific way of catching snakes. If, ah. Here's how we do it in Italy. <laughs> oh, I'm Italian too. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey snake. Uh, Maybe come. you come down now, right? That's right. Maybe you come oh, down you're down killing now. me. Oh, snake. Maybe hey, you come yeah. down. Look, they're coming down. Look, they're down on the ground oh, again. Where? I down there, them. down below. Oh, there they are. Oh, oh, no. oh no. Oh, and I'm picking so the snake. Oh, there. Pick oh. up a gentle one. Look, oh. oh. Oh, I want to clap. Understood. I want to clap for it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hi, snake. Oh, 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 oh thank you. God, thank I'm you black. for giving us snakes. <laughs> That's it. Nice job. Touch <laughs> <laughs> your score. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A five, an upside and down five, and a four, 14. The gentle and misunderstood bowling alley snakes. Not what I expected to see tonight. So there's one team that needs to come up that hasn't been up in a while yet, and I think that's the parasites. Dr. Kurz, will you come on up? Why don't you grab the microphone over there? 
And so another local story from you. Will you tell us about the, the horse hair worm? Is that something that occurs uh, locally? The horsehair worm is definitely a local animal. Uh, the we see it when it rains. So the El Nino year is going to be a great horsehair worm year. We hope. And now, where do these what do these parasites exist in? So the host of the horsehair worm the, that's here is that great big bug that we hate. We call it the potato bug. It's a you guys know that one? Yeah, it's like from another planet or something. Everybody's favorite. Insect. So it gets into this potato bug, and so what does it, it do? So it gets into the potato bug and basically lives for a long time and eats it inside out. <laughs> so and it is, is, is the potato bug still alive at some point? Potato, is it dead? Is it in purgatory? What's the, the potato bug is alive, except it's not going to actually breed or do anything. It's program death. The potato bug, when the worm is mature, finds water. So this is why when the first rains come, it ends up in the streams, in troughs. Uh, I've even seen it in uh, uh, the parking lot at, at schools uh, uh, around the area, so the in Montecito especially. It, g it gets into the brain of the potato bug and drives it towards water. It fills the whole body of the potato bug. So it's how long can one be in a And then the when it gets to what the it it it's it has a, a a a water drive the potato bug seeks water and dies there and then this worm ruptures out it's like the movie alien only <laughs> real And then you have this lovely 6 inch long worm writhing around this is by the way a great pet you get a little fish bowl, mm -hmm. and they put a little castle in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, the worm will, will use its castle. You put in the worm. It has no gut. It's going to live for a couple of months. It cannot feed, so this is the easy care pet. And it just <laughs> rides around in its little fish bowl for a few months, completing its life, and that's good. So the worm gets into the potato bug. The potato bug kind of becomes sort of a, z a, z a zombie. It's driven towards the water, and it will drown in water. It's not its normal. That's right. So, so the worms reproduce in the water. Uh, they mate, male and female. And then uh, the eggs and the larvae go into little aquatic insects. And these, when they emerge and uh, fly away uh, in their life cycle, when they die, they get eaten by things like potato bugs, and the worm then completes its life cycle. All right. Thank you, Dr. Curris. Have a seat. I don't know, guys. This reminds me of a certain 1950s t television series. <laughs> Sounds a little Twilight zone to me. Do you think you can do What yeah, would yeah. Rod Serling yeah, do sure. with this? Yeah, okay, sure. All right. Take it away. There. All right. <clears throat> Sandy, I have to tell you, this is some of the most delicious pie I've ever tasted in my life. It's just delicious. It's apple, isn't it? It sure is, Edward. Well, <laughs> what's wrong? What's eating you? <laughs> Are you I all right? I can't exactly say. I, I was out for a swim earlier. Oh, you, you know, don't like to swim? I thought it was strange. I was fully clothed on, all on my way to the market, and suddenly I saw the water there and thought, I must go in. I jumped in, and <laughs> before I knew it, I was swimming around the lake, fully clothed. <laughs> then I came home and baked a, baked a pie. <laughs> <sighs> but I can't help thinking I would rather be in the lake right now. Really? <laughs> you know that saying, go jump in a lake? Well, it sounds just wonderful to me. If I didn't know better, I'd say your body was filled with a parasite. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this pie's delicious. <laughs> I know that can't be true. Why would you say such a thing? I actually don't know. Wait a minute. How would you know such a thing? Why would you even imply it? I don't know. After work, I drove by this alleyway with a bunch of cats down at the end of it. <laughs> 
Now, now, that's not like you. What made you do such a thing? Well, I don't know, Sandy. I'm telling you, I don't know what drove me to do that. If I knew, I would tell you. Something's going on, something I don't like. Well, I jumped in a lake and you went into an alley. Well, that's not like us at all. We like the suburbs. We like to stay in our own area and safe from any kind of strange behavior. If the Andersons hear about this, oh. we probably won't. <laughs> Shut the windows. Is it too late? You there, Mr. Anderson. Keep your ears to yourself. Well, quit looking in our... Well, you, I'm sure they heard, and it's all over town. You know how Swedes are. They can hear really well. <laughs> I heard that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Close these drapes. Listen Swedish here. neighbors. It's from, it's from living next to those fjords. Listen Why are you here. touching your, your forehead Because like all that? I want to do is go jump in that lake. And all I want to do is go down near some cat urine behind a bar. <laughs> What's wrong with us? What's wrong with this? What could be happening? I'll tell you what's happening. I've been reading lately. Some oh. textbooks. Like oh, that's one. not like you. I keep it here next to the cookbooks in the kitchen. <laughs> there, take a look. That's right. That's in you. Oh. <laughs> I deserve that. I should you never have taken a book out and shown you the parasite that's filling your body. <laughs> you can't reproduce, so I guess that is that for us having oh. children. <laughs> what's happening to me? Did you hear that, Anderson? Oh, I've forgotten how to slap my husband. I want to jump in the lake and you're bringing out books. Listen. I didn't, I don't know, but my hearing is incredibly acute suddenly. It's not like you. I know. I just have to repeat things several times. Not tonight you don't. I heard something in, almost in stereo out in a foyer area. That's not like our foyer. No, not at all. Our foyer is usually strangely muffled. It's very muffled. The carpet and the cloth walls have assured it. Something strange is going on. It's clear pretty soon that whatever's inside of you is going to come out violently, and no. it's pretty clear that I'm going to run toward a natural predator of me. <laughs> Can't anything be done? Can't anything be done? I just wanted to live the American dream. That's so did I. I wanted pie and a kitchen and a <laughs> lovely wife. I wanted a husband and a house and a apple pie and a windowsill. And a foyer that wasn't so horribly noisy. <laughs> <laughs> is that a crime? Is it a crime? Submitted for your approval. <laughs> One suburban couple, Sandy and Jim Summers, the nicest people you'd ever want to meet, the most hospitable couple that was ever available on Elm Street, always inviting people in for pie and dinner and drinks. And yet they discovered that through no fault of their own, their hospitality had been taken advantage of by some alien beings, parasites that they couldn't see, but that were deep inside of them and had changed their behavior in the most extraordinary way. They would never have children. They would run into lakes and lick cat urine. <laughs> and yet they seemed to be as much in love as ever. <laughs> Which only goes to teach us that great lesson that no matter how disgusting your partner is, <laughs> once you're married, you're married. I'm blackout. Don't just go on. Oh, Twilight Zone. In the Twilight Zone. In the Twilight Zone. Yeah. In the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> adding quickly the evening's final scores. Oh my God! Bro. Everybody, uh, thanks for cut off. Read them, read them, and read. Parasites, end. thirty-nine. Yeah. Ants, thirty-six. Yeah. Snakes, thirty-six. All right, the trophy goes to the parasite. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. It's actually quite beautiful.